The system of capitalism creates environments and goals that are contradictory to each other, and these core contradictions become amplified over time until capitalist society collapses. For the benefit of the system, its participants and its media are dependent on ignoring and even distracting us from these very problems. Initially, we're put on the treadmill of consumerism, quantity of products being prioritized over quality to keep this treadmill going. Another trend to follow, the newest version of a thing to buy, are living costs, a bill that follows us until we die. Now, what's interesting about this constant going treadmill of consumerism is that we are simultaneously expected to run on it and also bear the ball and chain of debt. We are expected to still continuously consume and purchase while suffering long-term debts from college and vehicles, for the lucky few these days, mortgages. If it isn't already nonsensical enough that you are expected to run on this treadmill of consumerism while bearing the ball and chain of debt, capitalism has devised a system in which that debt drives your further consumerism. Holding off on a bigger ball and chain so you can run faster on the treadmill, credit card debt over time became a necessity in modern capitalism. Not only to develop a credit score, but to push off the costs of your basic needs onto credit cards with the expectation that there will be some kind of magical future money later. I'll elaborate more on this in a bit. See, this is a contradictory system. We cannot be expected to purchase and bear financial burdens at the same time, and the nonsensical solution of trying to turn those debts into something that will drive consumerism is even more absurd. Supremely absurd, however, is the capitalist response to the slowing of the treadmill of consumerism when these contradictions begin to halt it. Instead of finding these obvious contradictions at fault, they instead blame the consumers for the wrong type of consumerism. Don't buy coffee, stop eating avocado toast, stop doing this and that kind of consumerism. Companies now treat consumer value as a zero-sum game that they must fight amongst themselves to divvy in their favor, when in reality, the increasingly extreme contradictions of consumerism create not a zero-sum, but an actively shrinking sum game, where there's even less to divvy as anything non-essential is cut. A corporation will still blame the consumer instead of acknowledging the contradiction. The millennials killed the suit industry, they'll say. People are buying less jewelry, less diamond rings, less luxuries. And we the consumers are still blamed for the contradictions of the system. This consumer and debt culture. It makes us dependent on the wishy-washy capitalist concept of future money, the buy now, pay later kind of lifestyle, the racking up of credit card debts and predatory loans with high interest rates that make them impossible to pay off. The funny thing about capitalism is that all the wealth will eventually be concentrated to the top. The funny thing about capitalism is that you will eventually run out of other people's money. And then what? We run out and then we create future money. It's all gone now, but there will be more later. Surely, the system has to work. Here the world plays about with future money, not just even on the consumer scale, but even on the scale of an entire nation, drafting hundreds of billions of dollars for a military that isn't in any major wars, finding the most wasteful and complex ways to bomb people in countries Americans can't even point out on a map. People who have absolutely no chance of fighting back, but people just scary enough to convince the brain dead that we need even more imaginary future money to eradicate them. The aristocrats get to participate in their thievery now, but the tab for the cost of this future money is on the 1040s of every working class American. We could have spent this on ourselves, for our general welfare, for the people who had to beg for their lives on GoFundMe, but we spent it on aristocrats who bombed brown kids. Then we get to the other damning contradiction of the capitalist system, the way in which we slave away for all these nickels and dimes and so-called future money. Here's a system in which two different groups of people are trying to make all the money. You and your boss. If one makes more, the other makes less. The profits, so to speak, of a business can only go in the hands of one group of people, those who produce it and those who thieve it. The eternal tug of rope between the worker and their capitalist boss. Just as the aristocrats have control over how we spend the nation's future money, so too do they try to have a grip on the profit produced by their workers. And just like the future money of a nation, it's not just theft, well, it's wasted. Give a capitalist $50 and they'll put it in an offshore tax-exempt bank account and then ask for even more. Give a worker $50 and it's instantly recirculated into the economy. We cannot trust that a capitalist making more of the profits will make products cheaper or the capitalist more generous. They're hoarders by the very nature of their role in this kind of society. A worker cannot afford to hoard in such a way. It's spent on needs. It's spread out. Recirculated. They have no reason for the nonsensical idea of keeping money they never intend to use. The consumer contradictions hurt the consumer, and the workplace contradictions hurt the worker. It is those who are not aristocrats that lose every time when the contradictions of capitalism are allowed to continue. A capitalist will not starve if their bottom line isn't sky high, but a worker will surely suffer if they miss even one paycheck. A capitalist will not sweat it if one less person buys their product, but a consumer will be left without their basic needs if not able to purchase it. For as long as the contradiction between the interests of centralized and decentralized wealth exists, the gains will always be upon the capitalists and the losses upon the workers. The people. There is no amount of regulation or competition that makes these core contradictions any different. As long as they are allowed to exist, there is economic injustice in the world.